2,632. That's still standing record for most consecutive games played in Major League Baseball. That's a lot. The player who holds that record, of course, is none other than Baltimore Orioles superstar Cal Ripken Jr. He shares stories of his career and so much more in the new book titled Just Show Up and Other Enduring Values from Baseball's Iron Man. So we're beyond excited to welcome to Between Bells none other than the Iron Man himself, Mr. Cal Ripken Jr., who we also Yay! found out is a huge Game of Thrones fan. <laughs> <laughs> he and Nora basically figured out what's going to happen in the we last... Solved it. Uh, we solved it. Yeah, we solved it. Um, so, the record, by the way, is incredible. I think I've done nine consecutive shows here before I had to take a break. <laughs> so, so what sort of, uh, where can you take something like that and apply it to another form of business? You know, the cool part about uh, playing all those games in a row that everybody else shared their streaks uh, with me. Um, teachers that haven't missed a day, someone that hasn't missed a day 31 years in a plant. And I kept thinking, I'm playing baseball for a living. You guys are working. Yeah. So that's a little bit different. but. Uh, but uh, showing up is a really important uh, trait, and the only way to accomplish anything is to have a willingness to show up. So the streak just represents to me an extension of an approach that says, I want to meet the challenge for today. And you find out a lot about yourself when you're able to do that. So after I retired from baseball at 41, I had an opportunity for a second career. And so uh, I don't know, in case uh, everyone doesn't know, there's really two halves of what goes on in my life right now. One is uh, we've created the, the leading youth baseball business where we serve thousands of kids that come through each week um, in a tournament destination. And we also have a foundation that I named after my dad that we, uh, we serve about a million, a million and a half kids each year. And we build complexes all over the country. It's a national foundation. So the lessons that you've learned from baseball and now the lessons that you've learned in the business world they, t they seem to come together, and that's really what the book is all about. I feel like Just Show Up is such prudent advice for any industry totally. that you're in, but for something like baseball or other physically taxing careers or jobs, how do you take advantage of the in-between times when you're not on, when you're not at work, to really rejuvenate and prepare for the next day? Well, I think for me, it uh, took a lot learning about myself. How do you recharge? Some people like to recharge by being with other people. Um, my personality is more of an introvert, so that when I'm dealing with the stimulus of the ballpark and the media and everybody else, I need time to myself. And so I needed to retreat a little bit uh, to do that. But that, again, is part of... When you play for a sports team, that's another thing. You play for a sports team, they, they call it chemistry when you're in the clubhouse. When you're uh, in a business and you have people working uh, for a common goal, you call that a culture that you're building. Uh, and, there, and the two environments are different um, um, by and large, but still the outcome is how do you get the team to operate in the same direction? How did you learn about business while playing baseball? Did you just kind of always have it in the back of your mind while you were playing all of those games? Like, well, what, how do you learn it while you're playing the game? Well, I like to say I learned it uh, a lot through trial and error. And cool. so there's a lot of mistakes and, uh, and the way you've learned that. The same way you learn baseball is that in order to succeed, you must be willing to fail. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes it's just a matter of going out there and, and doing it. Um, I've always had an interest in business. Um, and uh, because of baseball, it, uh, you have so many wonderful exposures to people and businesses. Like a lot of times, executives will ask me about baseball, and I'll take that opportunity to ask them about business. Mm. Um, and you find yourself in those environments a lot. So I think the biggest thing was, and one of the chapters is, be the quietest in the room. My dad always gave me advice and saying, if you meet somebody that you really like, figure out a question you can ask them because whatever they tell you back, you, you can keep that information for a lifetime. Some people will say, can you sign something for me? And that's cool too. But from my dad's perspective, that just sits on the uh, shelf. You need to ask someone a question and, and get some information and get some wisdom from that person. What's a good question? Like if you met a celebrity that you've been wanting to meet your whole life, what would be a question that you might want to ask them? A, a general question. A and the, the follow-up is, who is yeah. the celebrity that you're really excited to meet at the same like time? How do you get that information that you can take with your, um, your life? I don't know if that. I have a trick for that. It's just uh, to me, uh, in my life, everybody asks me questions about uh, um, baseball. And, and I can talk baseball all day long. Um, but I want to ac actually find out something about you. Mm. And so then while we're talking in the course of baseball, I might say, um, well, how do you do it? You know, how does that happen in your business? Or, you know, because uh, as a, a teammate, if, uh, if I was to lead, because a lot of them are leadership questions, I think. Um, uh, and I don't believe a leader waves a towel and yells and screams and, and, and acts like a supposed leader. I, I, a leader that really knows what they're talking about and it can actually help you in a one-on-one -on -one situation. So a lot of the common ground that we have with CEOs or executives, um, or if it's a celebrity like uh, Michael Jordan from years ago, 
Um, I kind of want to know um, how he navigated his life and, and know how, because all of us don't expect to have these things happen to us, mm -hmm. and then they happen to us. Mm -hmm. So how do we deal with those things? How do we react? How do we keep things in perspective? Well, let's talk about one of those businesses you have. It's on your shirt, Ripken Baseball, mm -hmm. of course, a training camp for promising baseball players. The game seems like it's changing quite a bit since you were, uh, since you played. How do you kind of prepare athletes for coming into the league now when things were a lot different then? Well, I mean, I think what we try to do is uh, not so much prepare them, but just have them gain an experience. Uh, you know, uh, your goal in life as a baseball player is to make it to the big leagues. Mm -hmm. This many of them right. actually make it that. So we try to give them a big league experience all the way around. Um, when I talk about um, the game changing, it's, uh, it's all into analytics now. It's all, there's so much data that you're yeah. trying to apply the data to being able to play the game. And sometimes that can be a little overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes uh, just a simplified message is best. But I will say that baseball is concerned about losing um, um, kids that love to play baseball, you know, losing numbers. And they're trying to appeal to kids and trying to make the game a little faster paced. Right. So we're looking into many of our tournaments. How can we make the tournaments um, more interesting to the kids? How do we change? We might even change the rules of baseball and have tournaments that actually make it more action packed. Well, I'm glad you bring up that because there's so much controversy about what baseball does to retain the millennial viewer who might be distracted or wants things to go faster. That would be the pitch clock making those pitches mm -hmm. go faster. There's even potential for umpires to be replaced by, you know, robots. What uh -huh. is what is your feel on that? Would you like to have robots in the game? <laughs> you hit us on a subject that I really am excited about. I'd like to be able to include the uh, the digital mapping of a field to actually include um, not replacing the home umpire per se, but actually to give a fairer chance at the strike zone. Because in our tournaments, sometimes if the game gets lopsided, mm -hmm. then the game is uh, uh, the umpire wants to get the game over with a little bit, and then you have somebody that has right. been in a yeah. bat the whole tournament, right. and he gets called out on a bad pitch. Yeah, that's his whole experience, exactly. and now it's been ruined. So right. I'd love to have a way to figure out, and it's a matter of expense right now, is to have a digital umpire actually do the strike zone. That's something that I would like to do. Um, having kids be more action-packed, um, when we talked about that before, I mean, playing a game that's, that starts with people on base, you know, or starts wow. with the count three and two, right. or maybe you don't have three outs in the inning, maybe you have five batters. Mm -hmm. and then, so then you start to change the rules that will promote the situational baseball and the action. If you're going to get kids really, really interested as they start to get a hook in, just educating them on what happens. Because when you watch a baseball game, you probably think it's really... Boring and no, of no, we're the opposite. Right, we're the. We I feel like we're baseball. the anomaly. In but, but, but if you know the thinking and all that, I, I think it's a thinking man sport. And I think if you know the thinking and the adjustments and the back and forth that goes on, then you're way more into mm -hmm. what's going to happen. I almost pursued a career in sabermetrics ah. and baseball uh -huh. statistics. I love. Then baseball. you could be a general manager. Yes, okay, she maybe, is. maybe she I'll switch careers. She well, runs this show. When so. do you think we'll actually see change in the pace of the game? What does it take to get MLB to actually adopt some of these changes and these recommendations? Well, I think the uh, first is the idea that uh, that uh, um, uh, um, that they're going to do it or that, that, that they'd like to do it to speed the game up. I think what they're doing now is testing things in the minor leagues and kind of getting them uh, not to take so much time in between pitches. You know, use the clock to shape them. Once you get to the big leagues and once you've had success hitting a certain way, it's a big adjustment not to be able to stand out of the box or not to be able to think, okay, what's that pitcher going to do to me now? Or not to be able to control the pressure of the moment. Many pitchers when they get all riled up with the bases loaded, they need that little time, you know, to kind of get themselves back. A hitter sometimes get knocked da knocked down, and your emotions start to get the best of you, and then you need a little time to actually get back into your moment. So, it would be hard to change abruptly how they play the game at the big league level. I think what they're doing now is trying to change how the minor leaguers do it. So the minor leaguers will be the next big leaguer. Very quickly, Cal, who's going to be on the Iron Throne on Game of Thrones <laughs> at the end of the day? <laughs> oh my God. Um, uh, contrary to what uh, I told you earlier, yes. I have no idea. All right, that's fine. That is the safe answer, Cal. Not that's why it's so great. The book, of course, is Just Show Up. The author, of course, is Baseball Hall of Famer Cal Ripken, Jr. Cal, great to have you here. Thank good. you. Good to be here. Thank you.